you know colors go in and out of style, but it's really color combos that make decor. So Kimberly, you are keeping us up to date on the major yes. color combos that are be, being used these days in decor, and some of them are shocking. Some of them are shocking, and if somebody came to your house and said, Tracy, I'm going to decorate your house in a sagey green and an orange, you'd say, uh, no, you're not, get out. right? <laughs> so one thing that really can help you um, get comfortable with more unusual color palettes is one thing, go into the garden and look at all the different color combinations there. Mm. It's legit. There's really nothing you can't do. Yeah. And, and the second thing is to go to a great fabric store. So I went to fabric, uh, to Kravit Fabrics mm -hmm. and found this wonderful kind of desert, desert bloom linen fabric. Mm -hmm. And you can see we've got that deep sea sage green. We've got a nice deep yellow. We've got a, a brick, dark brick color. And this is a Benjamin Morris Fairmont green and chili pepper. And the fact of the matter is you're not going to do a feature wall with those those two colors slam together, <laughs> right. but you can see when there's breathing space between the colors, that nice beige color that's in the background, a little bit of yellow, you can see how suddenly it develops kind of a groove and a feeling about it. So there's really no bad color. Mm -hmm. There's only bad ways of using them. Very true. Okay, so yeah, if you had said red and green, I would just get out. Uh, not but Christmas. But then when you see it, it's not Christmas, but when you see it with this pattern, it's like, that's beautiful. Yes. It completely works. Right. Okay, so we'll this, this one. I love this one. So we call this one wine and bubble gum. Um, and this is a really beautiful Kelly Wurstler fabric. It's, it's a linen fabric. I actually have this fabric on a chair, uh, but it's just the gray and white and dark gray co color combination. Mm -hmm. And the wall color are Mary Me, which is so <laughs> cute, and dark burgundy. Lovely. And, you know, again, you might think this is a little bit girly, but once you add uh, that element of the gray in there, suddenly it becomes fairly neutral gender, gender neutral. Absolutely. And you so ground it with some black it. and it's getting more and more masculine as you go along. Wine right. and bubble gum though, that's a good night. It's a <laughs> right? <laughs> Any Just night of the wine week. and some bubble gum. It's great. I'm telling you, life is good. This is an interesting color combo. Um, yes. That it, it's got a vibe to it, almost like an Aztec vibe I, to it. I agree. I would sort of say this is kind of tribal. That yeah. fabric is so beautiful. It's on this grayish linen backdrop. It's mm -hmm. got a cruel or embroidered uh, texture on the top. And then the colors behind are orange blossom some honeycomb and honeycomb and San Jose blue. And again, I would never paint the walls in this particular co color combination, but let's say you have beautiful tan walls or even a dark charcoal wall, you can see how you can mix these colors in yes. in a combination that would become very effective. You know, when you're thinking about going out and decorating for yourself, like if you're a DIY person and you're thinking, I'm going to do this myself, my tip, I always start with the fabrics because I'm going to find more adventurous combinations mm -hmm. when I start with the fabric. There's a limited number of fabrics in the world, right? So I go and I find a signature fabric that I'm absolutely madly in love with and yes. then I build the room around that fabric. Nice. That's a little bit easier, I think, than starting with a purple sofa. Right? I agree. I know it's a smart way to go. Right. And it just shows you what's out there, what's naturally out there. Now this color combo, I love it. I love it in fashion. I love it in decor. It's a, it's it's very Tiffany. I think Tiffany oh, would approve of this completely. I think it's really, really pretty. It's dark salmon from Benjamin Moore and mm -hmm. crushed berries mm -hmm. on the outside. Uh, again, we're seeing a lot of femininity come in because um, I think contemporary design in general took over and that meant a lot of heavy grays which felt very handsome and very masculine so we are really seeing a little pushback to some colors that are a bit more feminine right oranges pinks salmons raspberries mauves those kind mm. of colors and it's it's actually kind of lovely you know they're sort of uplifting and wonderful great. so I'm happy to see it well yeah and you know what you like what you like yeah. like I come to the table and I think I love that you and were, I love that I'm a girl you were right there. I just <laughs> like it there's something about it that uh, okay, feels so really nice this is the one that got me, and I just, I think this is divine. So this is a Thomas O'Brien fabric. Uh, it's a watercolored linen effect fabric. I could see this being draperies on the walls. I could mm -hmm. see it being beautiful pillows on the sofa. It could definitely be a chair. And then when you look at the board of colors, we've got Italianate here. Brookside Moss in the middle and Amherst Gray on the outside. So I've got my nice neutral in there, 
But, you know, again, if I came to you and said, I think I'm going to do tan, gray, mustard, and sage, <laughs> right? You'd throw me out. That's but if right. I show you the fabric, you go, oh, that's really pretty. So right. I guess the bottom line is have an open mind. Don't look at the pink color names because that can persuade you one way or the other. That's true. Trust your natural reaction. Yes. You know, trust your gut instinct on at least that signature fabric. And then hold back a little with your big purchases, your sofas and stuff. Maybe make those neutral. Absolutely. Really yeah. good lesson. I know that you've been pretty busy lately, Kimberly. You always are. I mean, it's yes. Canada 150 this year. We're celebrating so Canada. Excited. And I think what's really cool is you decided to go for your Canadian citizenship. I did. Okay. I'm so, gonna cry. You're going to make me cry. Oh my gosh. We're so excited to have you. Gaining your Canadian citizenship is doing a test and exam. You did your exam. I did. How it. did it go? I got a hundred percent. Oh my gosh! I did. I was dying. So, so after you take the test, you go in and you meet with a person, and you know he's like looking at me. He doesn't no, no, you know, like facial expression. I have no idea what's going to happen. And then he's asked me a couple questions, and then he said, "You got a hundred percent on the test." I just burst into tears. Oh. I had no idea because there, it's a little bit harder than I than I think you might think. It's not a little bit hard. It is hard. It's You're more hard. Canadian than I am right now at 100 percent. Are you kidding I me? I could definitely make some money at a trivia contest yes. in a Canadian bar. You that totally is for sure. Could. I'm ready. Well, you know, you you are part of our family, Thank and so you. we wanted to get you a little something, something oh, to oh, no. you know signify oh, no. you becoming a new Canadian. <laughs> open it up. I'll just wave this around, and you open up what's in there. I love Take it. him out. He's waving. He's waving. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. We are I so happy that we have a new brilliant Canadian uh, as part of our you family. Guys,